while it's gooey, mosquitoes that bit dinosaurs get stuck in it, and now you've got DNA, and you can make dinosaur parts and do the whole deal, okay? So they would have amber, kind of as a doodad, you know, a, a decorative piece. They would try to dust it, and it might crackle like that. More importantly, it would do things that violated the normal process where stuff stays down. It would pick up lint. Now, the Greek word for amber is electra. And so this came to be called electricity. They didn't get any further than this. It was a parlor trick. They didn't figure out any patterns. They didn't figure out any rules. The next guys along with the Romans. The Romans were obsessed with world conquering and didn't do practically any science. Then the whole world collapsed. We spent a thousand years in the dark ages and did nothing. Finally, along comes the Enlightenment, and people start looking at some of these things with a little uh, uh, more thoughtful eye. So let's see what happens. It turns out that the properties of PVC pipe are very similar to the properties of a balloon. And so we can do this. Notice the way these balloons originally hung. Not surprising, they're hanging vertically. The force in charge is gravity, and the balloons are most interested in the center of the Earth. But if I rub the balloons with this fur, the balloons are now at least as concerned about the other balloon as they are about the center of the Earth. You notice the strings are no longer vertical, and the balloons are pushing one another apart. Okay, so this is kind of surprising. At first we thought that we attracted stuff. We then find that if we take our amber, hard rubber rod, whatever we've got, and rub it, ooh, so whatever this is doesn't like the same stuff. Like situations seem to repel. They realized that what seemed to be happening was when you rubbed something, you produced this property, so they tried some other things. And in the ancient world, they tried silk and glass, because they had it. Silk and glass works, but nowhere near as well as cotton and acrylic. And so if we rub acrylic with cotton, we can also hear a little cracking. And of course, you do this when you pull a sweater off of a shirt, and you get cracking. If you have two dissimilar materials rubbing past one another, you apparently create this effect. But what happens here is the reverse. We seem, instead of repelling, we seem to attract. And clearly blue likes it better. <laughs> Color. Now, we're infinitely lucky today it's hard to get this to work on damp days. Because what we're looking at is called static electricity. The word static means noise on your radio, not moving, OK? So static electricity, notice everything we've played with is a non-conductor. It's electricity that can't go anywhere. If the air is wet, the electricity can go somewhere. It moves through the moist air. And so it's hard to get this stuff to work. So, so, so far, so good. Um, so what we have discovered is that this, there seem to be two properties here, and like properties repel and unlike properties seem to attract. But Franklin came along and he said, well, you know, we can do this thing, and we noticed the balloons have kind of subsided because of the moist air, so we kind of have to pump them back up again. Rub their little part out, okay? And so now, we bring this in, and there's clearly a repulsion, okay? Now, that's where everybody else stopped, but what Franklin did was this, okay? And, and this is a really important thing, because what Franklin was realizing was he started out with nothing. Before he rubbed these two things together, the balloon didn't care about them. When he did, this repelled the balloon. But not for nothing, somehow the change in this brought about an opposite change in that. So Franklin decides that you're taking something off the rod with the fur, 
So he decided the rod had lost something and the fur had gained something. And he said the rod is negative and the fur is positive. And you say, and he's famous for that? Well, he is. The negative and positive are just names. But what's critical is they really aren't just names. If he had named this Harry and Sally, he wouldn't be famous. Because Harry and Sally don't add up to zero. Positive and negative add up to zero. So what Franklin said was, A, there's two types of these things, and B, they are conserved. They don't come from nowhere, they don't go nowhere. We separate them or we recombine them. Conservation laws are absolutely critical to science. The discovery of conservation of matter, let us begin chemistry. The discovery of conservation of energy, let us begin physics. And so conservation of charge is a really, really fundamental idea. It's an idea that makes you a very important scientist. And so that's the reason that Franklin is held in high regard.